In this lecture, we introduce graph fonts to study graph filters and GNNs in the limit of graphs with very large number of nodes. A graph form is a bounded symmetric measurable function w mapping points of the unit square to the unit interval. This definition is such that we can think of graph forms as weighted symmetric graphs with an uncountable number of nodes. The labels of the nodes are the arguments of the Graphon function, that is, the values that x can take in the unit interval. The weights of the edges are the Graphon values, the value wxy that the Graphon function takes. Observe that since the function is symmetric, wxy is the same as wyx for node labels x and y. To gain some intuition, we present here three examples. The uniform or, uniform or Erdos Reni Graphon, a symmetric stochastic block model Graphon, and an asymmetric stochastic block model Graphon. The uniform or Erdos Reni Graphon is such that Wxy is constant and equal to p for all values of x and y. This Graphon is related to the Erdos Reni family of random graphs, which consists of graphs where edges are drawn independently with the same probability. A balanced stochastic block model Graphon takes values wxy equal to p when x and y are both between 0 and 1 half or both between 1 half and 1. This is signified by the dark blue areas in the figure. The SPM Graphon takes values wxy equal to q when either x or y are between 0 and 1 half and the other argument y or x is between 1 half and 1. This is signified by the light blue areas in the figure. The value p is much larger than the value q. This graphon models two communities, one community with labels varying from 0 to 1 half, and the other community with labels varying from 1 half to 1. The connection within communities is strong. The edge weights are large. The connection across communities is weak. The edge weights are small. An unbalanced SVM graphon has an analogous definition, except that the sizes of the communities are unbalanced. One community is larger than the other. In the figure, we have a community that spans labels from 0 to 0.2, and another community that spans labels from 0.2 to 1. Within communities, we have strong weights P. Across communities, we have weaker weights Q. What is the purpose of defining these graphs with uncountable number of nodes? Philosophically, phenomena are easier in uncountable spaces. This is the reason humanity invent invented calculus. But what is the phenomenon we are trying to simplify? In practice, graphons are abstractions for families of graphs with large numbers of nodes in which members of the family have similar structure. Instead of studying individual members of the family, we study the graphon. This is likely easier, and it also provides information about the whole family, not individual graphs. In theory, the Graphon provides a generative model for graph families. We can generate graphs through stochastic or deterministic sampling of the Graphon. These sampled graphs share a common property, which is that they are sampled from the same Graphon. Another, another more subtle epistemological value is that Graphons are limit objects for sequences of graphs. As the number of nodes of the graph increases, it is intuitive to expect graphs to approach a limit. The graphon is this limit. Let us dwell, dwell deeper into these three comments. In terms of the practical value of graphons, recall our encounters with product similarity graphs. As we look at these graphs for different collections of products, we see that these graphs look like each other. This is true even if the number of products we are considering are different. We can therefore abstract these similarities into a limit object. This limit object is what we would call the product similarity graphon. The reason for creating a limit abstraction is that similarities are more apparent for larger graphs. We can think of product similarity graphs as elements of a sequence converging to a product similarity graphon that encodes this shared structure. It is important to point out that this limit graphon is not something that we compute in practice. We just use the abstract idea of a graphon to work with all of these graphs as if they were the same object, which in a sense they are. 
They are all close to the product similarity Griffon. To use Griffons as generative models, it suffices for us to consider samplings of the unit or zero one interval. To generate the vertices of a graph with n nodes, we sample n points u1 through un from the unit interval. These points can be sampled in a number of ways. Most often, we take them from a regular partition of the unit interval, or we sample uniformly at random from the unit interval. In either case, each sample corresponds to a node label of the graph. We can use ui itself as the label, or we can use i as the label, or any other one for that matter. We know that the names of labels are not important. What is more important in the generation of the graph is the, the determination of edge weights. For doing that, we evaluate the weight WUYUJ to determine the properties of the edge IJ. There are two ways in which we can use WUYUJ to generate graph edges. In the stochastic model, we create an edge connecting i and j with probability w, u, y, u, j. If we add this edge, the edge is unweighted and undirected. In the weighted model, we add an edge connecting i and j whenever the Griffon function w, u, y, u, j is not known. When we add this edge, the edge is undirected, but we now make it weighted. The weight of the edge is the Griffon function value w, u, y, u, j. As an example of the use of graphons as generative models, consider the uniform graphon. We can use the uniform graphon to generate uniform random graphs with the same or with a different number of nodes. The specific edge structure of the generated graphs differs across instantiations, but they have a shared structure that they receive from the generating graphon. This latter observation is more clear if we consider further examples. For instance, consider the balance as the on graphon. As we did with the uniform graphon, we can use this balanced SVM graphon to generate balanced SVM random graphs with the same or with a different number of nodes. Specific edge structures differ across instantiations, but these graphs have a common structure that is clearly different from the structure of the uniform random graphs we have just seen. Likewise, if we consider the unbalanced SVM graphon, we generate unbalanced SVM random graphs with the same or with a different number of nodes. These graphs are different from each other, but they are more similar to each other than they are to the graphs we generated with the balanced SVM graphon or to those we generated with the uniform graphon. They belong to a family we have generated using the unbalanced SVM graphon. The other more subtle value of graphons is their use as limit objects of sequences of graphs. In the figure, we consider random graphs with increasing number of nodes. It is clear that as the number of nodes grows, the graph is approaching some sort of limit. But it is unclear what that limit is. We will see in this lecture that the graphon is the limit, that the graphon is introduced to formalize the notion of convergent graph sequences.